I've had a request for you guys. Some of you guys have asked me to show you what I normally do during the day, and we've got some really good possibilities of some rain today, so I've decided to take on a project here and share it with you. Uh, just like the water heater, I enjoy doing things myself. I've got a lot of experience in, in, in a lot of repairs and kind of a, a, a wide variety. Today I'm working on a Sony Bio laptop, like this. This was given to me by a friend here, and it wouldn't work. It said that the system wasn't found. Well, if you turn your computer on, especially here in the Philippines, I don't know why, but it seems that the temperatures, the climate, maybe the magnetic, whatever here, just if you don't use your electronics, they're going to quit. More than likely, they'll quit on you pretty quick. So, um, what, what he gave it to me, told me I could have it. He said he had it checked out. Said it was a, somebody said it was a hard drive. I checked it and I found it. it was, I, I knew it was a hard drive. So. And I knew it had some other issues, so today I'm going to kind of go through it real quick, show you how to fix your Sony Vial. If it doesn't boot up, it says system uh, system not found. The best thing to do is, is hit F2 on your keyboard when you when it starts up. Before you lose the Sony Vio logo that appears in your screen, start hitting the F2 button button, and then you it'll get you into the BIOS. And then when you get into your BIOS, which is a con system configuration of your equipment look for the hard drives and search for the hard drives and if it says hard drive not found then you know you've got a dead hard drive. Uh, from, from that point you, you know you're going to need to get another hard drive and you may need some other issues. Well, I've already put the hard drive in here. I bought a new one, got it in, I got the, uh, loaded up uh, Windows 7 and I upgraded to Windows 10 so it's working but we, we've got some other issues with the laptop so I'm going to show you how to fix it. We're going to do three things today. We're going to put in a new CMOS battery. Uh, I know the battery is old, and so I'm going to upgrade and put, uh, put it in here. And that's just where you get your top clock. It keeps your clock going, and it keeps your BIOS current. So when you shut down, you reboot your computer, everything's just like it is, and you've got the correct time. Number two, the Wi-Fi didn't work. I knew when, when Joe got his apartment that he had to do a hardwire to, to connect his computer to PLDT for internet, which which indicated that he had some kind of a Wi-Fi issue. So I ordered a new Wi-Fi, I troubleshot it, and I did all, all my work. You have to go in and look for your system. You have to look for your devices, and then once you find your devices, and you know you got your device drivers loaded up, which I had to get from Sony because the hard drive died, and so did all the, all the drivers. Sony, via, Sony does have, if you will use your correct model number, you can go straight to Sony and get all of your operating files, everything, all your uh, all your all your uh, all your uh, files that you need to operate your computer. I checked it out. You needed a Wi-Fi card. This is the Wi-Fi card. I ordered it from China. It came in without any problems. It cost me ten dollars. Shipping, freight, everything, ten dollars. I got the hard drive for twenty-two hundred pesos, which is about forty dollars, uh, fifty dollars, uh, a little right at fifty dollars U.S. Then the CMOS battery was. 80 pesos, uh, 30 pesos, I think, so that's less than a dollar. And we're going to take this computer, this laptop's running very hot. So we're going to put some thermal paste on. I'm going to pull the CPU apart, going to, going to uh, take it apart, clean it, uh, make sure everything's fine in there, blow it out, clean it out, clean out the fans. I'm going to put some thermal paste back on there and re reassemble it because after a number of years, I believe this computer is seven years old, that the thermal paste may, may it may not be any, any good anymore with all the heat breaking it down so we're going to clean it and we're going to put some thermal paste on here now just for your information this model number is about a seven year old computer the pcg pcg 131 or 1314l um, but for general purposes it's probably going to be real similar to most of the sony bios out there so let me get started taking it apart and and y'all hang okay, with the us. first thing you want to do, I'm going to have just a couple of simple tools here. It's nothing fancy. You don't have to be all set up, but uh, a couple of things you need to do here. First thing you need to do is get your battery out. A couple of clips. Bingo. There it goes. Next thing you want to do is you want to get your hard drive out of here. It's going to be located over here. It up. You move the plate out of the way where you won't need it again. Finish taking your hard drive out. Goes one screw here, 
slide your hard drive over and lift it up. The next step, you want to take your RAM chips out. And that's going to be in this little plate. Move that plate over there. And then you've got two, two on your, this one here has got two, two gig uh, chips. You can use a thumbnail and a screwdriver. Pop it out. There you go. Remove it. One more. Pull it out. Remove it. Now I'm going to upgrade these to four gig. You know, a piece that will give me a total of eight gigs. If your computer's starting to slow down, <clears throat> I'm gonna, uh, you need to upgrade your RAM. This one only. This came with Windows 7. It only came with four gigs okay. of RAM. Next thing, one of the things you have to do next uh, is remove your disk drive, and that's done with this screw here. Okay. Here's your CD-ROM. It slides out. Real simple. You set it aside, and then you're ready to start taking all of these screws out. We're going to have some screws in the bay in here, in the battery bay, so don't forget those. You might think you just about got it apart, but these batteries are hiding back here. Okay, I had one more screw. With, I got the ones out of the battery tray down here, but there was one more right here in this little hole here, so you got to make sure you get them all. And once you find them all, you get all your screws out of it here. I've already pried the front clips loose then it comes apart real easy. Take this, move it out of your way. There is that thunder, guys. Okay, this is where we're at today. First off, we've got this little Wi-Fi card here. Now, uh, this is used for your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi. You know, and my troubleshooting, when I ran to check my system devices, everything I checked on it showed that that wasn't working. So here's your Wi-Fi card right here. So we are going to set it aside. Here's the new one. And I'm going to plug it in. Slide it down. Oh. Tighten it down. Okay, we just installed the Wi-Fi card. There, like you feel them click, so you know that they're hooked up. You want to make sure you reroute your wires back out of the way and point these this way direction because you will try not to get that metal. And we will place them in another location. We don't want to get them mixed up with our case screws. Three, four. Most of these vials are real similar. They've changed a little bit. And then here, here is your fan power. power here, so you want to pull that out of there, right out of there, electrical connection, you don't dare want to leave that on. So we're going to pull the mounting screws loose on that fan, looks like there's only two of them on this baby, and move those to a different location, and let's see if there's any more. That seems to be it. Now, we've got a little lock here. There it goes. It just... And those are the wires. And here is your thermal paste. Oh my goodness. This is rock solid. This, this is like dried tar, dried paint from 10 years ago. No wonder this computer is running so hot. So what we're going to do I'm going to move my light here. Is I'm going to take a blade that I have here, a flat blade, 
I'm going to clean that off of there. No wonder this computer's running hot. My goodness. Clean the bulk of that off. Scrape it off the best you can. I'm glad I decided to go ahead and tear it down. I made two or three runs to get parts. And I would just want to make sure that when I can take this apart and show you and clean it, that I can get it back together okay and not have to, have to keep redoing this. But I've got that part reasonably clean. I'm going to take the CPU now. I'm going to scrape the rest of it off the CPU here. I don't want a bunch of stuff in here, so I'm going to be real careful. And what happens is, is this thermal paste, I've got some thermal paste here that I'm going to put on there. What it does is it makes a solid connection. It, it, it transfers the heat from the, this copper as its fan is cooling to the central processing unit. So the CPU sort of transfer the whole. It's kind of like a radiator in your car. You need to get that heat out of that radiator and you do that through the little fins that the fan motor, the radiator fan blows through. Called, kind of like a heat exchanger. And if that thermal paste is no good, and it's dried up, then you're going to, then you're going to have a problem getting the heat transfer from this CPU to this to this cooling fan here, to this topper. <coughs> okay, got that done. This is not rocket science, guys. A little alcohol, put it on a swab. Get in here and clean it. Try to get as much of that paste as you can off of there. That's bright and shiny now. Get this pan, and we're going to clean this up real, real good. And get every bit of it off of there. You need to use an alcohol like this so it'll dry out real quick. You don't want any moisture back in there, on there. Okay. This is really going pretty quick, guys. 